Hi everybody, welcome to Cup of Kibble. We have company today. Uh, this is Mr. Stitch, it's my daughter's um, nine, almost actually, I think it's gonna be 10 this month, Chewini. She got him, uh, she rescued him last July and he was malnourished. Um, he had fleas and she has cooked him back to, got him back to good health uh, no, she's not home cooking. She uses Dr. Harvey. She's a grad student. She has no time to be home cooking. Uh, Miss Bell is not very um, crazy about having <laughs> another dog in the house. She's just a one person dog. Anyway, I wanted to show you Mr. Stitch. And today I'm going to be making a London broil uh, quick recipe. So stay tuned. Say bye guys. Come on, Bella, be a good hostess. Hostess with the mostess. <laughs> okay, so I cooked a uh, two pound London broil in the slow cooker and I cut it up into cubes. I cooked it for like two and a half hours on low and that was perfect. I cut it up into cubes and now I'm going to, um, probably should add some water to help the food processor along. One second, I wasn't, I'm not prepared. Can you see us? I don't even know if you can see us. Um, and, okay. Now the last time I made this recipe, I added the juice from the slow cooker. And I think Bella got sick from that uh, because when I look now, there was a lot more water than I put in on the slow cooker. So this time I'm not putting that juice in. I may let it sit overnight and take the fat off. I really did not think there was any fat on London broil. So I'm adding water to this this time. And I'm going to juice this around. I have sticks on the floor. I wish I could hold both of them, but that's basically impossible. Um, now I'm going to add, if you can see here, I have maybe a half a cup of broccoli, half a cup of uh, zucchini. Uh, I have some um, cauliflower rice and butternut squash. So I'm going to add all that in. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm sorry, I'm a little bit out of sorts today because I am dog sitting while my daughter is at... King's Dominion. Anyway, I'm going to add my calcium in. You always have to add calcium to your recipe. And this was two pounds of London broil. I want to thank my Instagram follower, Sharon, who is local here and told me that the grocery store had London broil half price. So I got a $14 London broil for only $7. That is fantastic. If you have freezer space, you can buy more when food is on sale. And that's just another way of cutting down on your costs. This is Omega Booster. It's pumpkin seeds, hemp hearts, and flax seeds. Everything to cut down on your cost. Okay, so now I'm gonna put this on and actually, no, I'm going to add this. <laughs> this way, everything's going to be getting mixed together. Cauliflower all over the floor if the dogs want to eat that. Okay, and the last thing I'm going to add is in the refrigerator, isn't it? Yeah, here it is. I should have mixed this earlier. Um, I have almost a half a cup of blueberries for the antioxidants. I have some sardines that I opened the can last week and I put the rest in the freezer. So I'm gonna add that in here. And I have my beef heart and beef liver. You could look 
on my playlist on YouTube for my uh, recipes for that. I do that all, I cook that all up myself. Now, I want to go ahead and move this sardines around because sometimes it all stays in one place and you want to make sure that everything is mixed around. Okay, so now to help this, I'm gonna add some more water. Okay, another good reason to home cook is a lot of moisture in the food. Kibble only has 3% moisture. And I'm just gonna mix this around. So that's it for that. Hey, it's later at night and I'm editing this video. And I wanted to let you know that all that liquid that was in the uh, slow cooker from the meat, it's been sitting in my refrigerator now for like six hours. And there's no fat in that. So that did not get Bella sick. Um, I think what got Bella sick, I went back and I actually looked at my video that I did the end of April for the London Brawl that she's eating now. And the only thing different I've done with that recipe is that I put in raw garlic in all my recipes in her 11 years of life. I have always given her garlic, but I've put it into like the eggs or the beef and I let it cook together. This one particular recipe, I put raw garlic into the food processor, so it never cooked. Now, raw garlic is very good for dogs, but my dog, first of all, she had a bleeding ulcer because of Rimadil. And second of all, uh, based on traditional Chinese medicine, she is a hot dog, meaning she has hot tendencies and I need to stay away from hot food. And for her, I know for a fact that turmeric gets her sick, fresh turmeric. And I would say um, fresh ginger and also fresh garlic. But if I put those fresh ingredients like into the ground beef or into the eggs or into the turkey and I cook it together, she's fine because that calms the the herb down. So I'm pretty sure it was the garlic. I want to make it clear, garlic is very healthy for dogs, okay? She's been getting cooked garlic for 11 years, but this one time I used raw garlic. So now I have like seven cups of London broil from April that I'm going to hold off giving to her. Um, because I think that's what it was, but I wanted to let you know it definitely was not from the juice. There is no fat in that. Uh, so I may actually add it back in when I give it to her. All right, that's so it. So I pre-measured each one out. Bella gets a half a cup, and I put them on this sheet tray, and I put it in the freezer until it got hard. And now I can put them in um, a freezer bag and I'm gonna label this one, London Brawl, no garlic, no muscle, 61321. And I'm saying that because I'm keeping track of what ingredients I put or I don't put in the food. It's, it's something good, I think, to do. So let me see how many meals I got out of this. So I got 11 meals out of this, and I'll put it in with my other assortment of foods. I have here pork. I have here ground beef, I have turkey, and what is this? And salmon. And tomorrow's Monday, I go over to the, uh, over here at Monday, she gets pork at night. Every morning she gets eggs. I have that in the freezer separately. So this is her schedule, what she gets each day. Yes, I'm talking about you. And then she gets her eggs. I just keep the eggs here on the side, but I keep everything else in this container. 
to stay organized. I find that this container is good because this is all her prepared food. Everything else I have in this freezer is either for me or um, it's some vegetables for her. So if I want to grab her food based on what day it is, I could just pull this out and not keep the uh, freezer open. Yes, that's for you.